you are about to see the most durable men and women athletes in the world extending themselves to the absolute limits of their endurance in a quest for self-knowledge, for personal honor that only they can explain and only they can understand. This is the Ironman World Triathlon. I'm Bruce Dern, and I'm here on the Kalua Pier on the Big Island of Hawaii. As you can see in here behind me, it's about to begin. These 600 men and women will go in the water, swim 2.4 miles, come out, take a shower, put on bike gear, climb on their bicycles, and ride 112 miles. Get off the bike, change into running gear, and run a marathon. Now, just so you get an idea of what that entails in terms of mileage. That's the equivalent of going from New York to Baltimore. In its first year, only 15 hardy souls trained for the Ironman triathlon. 13 finished. 15 more tried it the next year. 13 finished. Didn't look as if it was catching on, but it was. The next year, 108 entered. And the year after that, 305. Now there's nearly 600, and they've come from everywhere. Why? There's a search involved here, a search for what lies inside. The reason I compete is because it's like if you took a class and you learned all this, and then they never gave you the final exam, you really don't know whether you did well or not. Here's Dave Scott. Winner of the 1980 Ironman Triathlon in record time of 9 hours and 24 minutes. A fitness consultant from Davis, California. Nice, friendly guy, normal as they come. Yeah, except that in a week he swims 5,000 yards, bikes 380 miles, and runs 70 miles. My commitment to training is not an obsession, I think, like some people would categorize it. Uh, it's, it involves my entire day, but... Um, I don't feel as though I have to go through a certain ritual to get to a certain mental level to, uh, to train. Uh, I know what I need to do. I try to plan it out fairly strategically and uh, methodically. And even though I am doing it five to eight hours a day, uh, I, I don't feel as though I'm, I'm really obsessed with that, if you can understand that. They're testing Kim Bouchong's stamina at California's El Camino College, measuring his energy fuel, his oxygen concentration, scientific things like that. The treadmill simulates a painful uphill climb, but Kim's only 24. He's a match for even these infernal machines. Bouchong, Scott, just kids, really. Okay. But not all of the triathletes are youngsters. It's Harry Dupree is 43 and president of an Oklahoma City bank. A guy like this has to squeeze his training in between foreclosures. At 39, Kay Moore finished the 50-mile mountain run over the Continental Divide. Now she's one of 50 women trying to be an Iron Man. And you know, not every one of these women's been at as long as Kay. Kathleen McCartney hadn't done anything more strenuous than swim in a pool until a year and a half ago. And her boyfriend persuaded her to run with him. Within four months, she was running with him in marathons. Six months ago, she took up biking. Now she's going to ride one at top speed for 112 miles. The men that I've been training with... ...and um, aggressiveness. The Tinley brothers, Scott and Jeff, train together to relieve what even they confess can be the drudgery of a six-hour workout. Scott, the older one, he's 25. He's married works as an instructor by day at an aquatic center and studies for his master's degree at night. He's done so many marathons, he's looking for new roads to run and ride on and new waters to cross. And everybody's done a marathon now, and now everybody's shooting for triathlons. It's, it's the next step, I suppose. Uh, the Hawaiian triathlon being the biggest of the events, um, doing it last year for the first time and doing halfway decent, and going back this year, I suppose, just to try and improve my time and to, uh, to give it a good shot. Little Jimmy Stokes, a wee man from Cornwall, Ontario. 
admits at age 63, my aspirations far exceed my abilities, but he makes do. He runs marathons, runs up the side of mountains, and when no mountains available, he runs up and down stairways. He parachutes, he skis cross country, and you know what he does to relax? He roller dances. Uh, the business of our aging is, is um, uh, a sore point with me. Uh, people seem to think that because you get to a certain age, you should act in a certain manner. I never did it when I was young. I'm damned if I'm going to do it when I'm getting older. The island of Hawaii, the big island of the chain. Nearly twice the size of the other Hawaiian islands combined. Its landscape joins dark volcanic rock with lush tropical vegetation. Geologically, it's the youngest of the islands, but the first to be inhabited by Polynesian adventurers from the south. We arrive here from Honolulu by Hawaiian Air and drive the short distance to triathlon headquarters at the magnificent Kona Surf Hotel, perched on black cliffs above the thundering Pacific. The triathlon course traces some 60 miles of the rugged Kalua Kona shoreline. The swimmers will plunge into the waters of Kalua Bay, swim out to the anchored sailing vessel, Keana, go around her and head back to the pier. That's a total distance, 2.4 miles. You know, there's really only one way to appreciate what these athletes will endure, and that's to give the three events a try. I'm not going to do the whole course, but I am going to try to do just enough of it to get a feel for it. Well, I don't feel so bad. Water's about 70 degrees, no rough surf, no real undertoes, no swells. Of course, there's not 600 and some odd contestants around me yet, all going in the water at the same time like a bunch of lemmings. Somebody could get kicked in the goggles or something. You never know. I'm here by myself, and it's actually delightful. From the pier, the bikers pedal through town and head north along the Queen Kaahumanu Highway to the coastal village of Havi. Then it's back again on Alihi Drive to the finish at the Kona Surf. Well, I got to tell you, it's starting to get to me a little bit. And I've only done, what, eight miles? Means I got about 104 to go on the bike. My legs aren't doing too bad. But on the bike, I'll tell you something, it's the back of your neck and your shoulders that really get stiff. I'm going to try and pick it up now and see how hard I can really go on the bike. See if I could ever really be a cyclist. <laughs> 